Creative Katie, Karen Birchill here, and welcome to my channel, Mixed Media Creations. Take time to subscribe to my channel. Also, become a member of my Facebook group under the same name, Mixed Media Creations. Today, we have a tutorial that showcases the reversing the stencil technique as I create three mixed media mini canvases. So these are four by four canvas boards. They're magnetic on the back and I'm giving each one of them a coat of black gesso. I'm getting ready for a craft market and so doing things kind of assembly line is a way of making things go a little bit faster and less clean up because I'm doing the same technique on three, actually four canvases, although you're only going to see me develop three of them. So I'm kind of wrapping the black paint around the back just to finish it off. So once I'm done, I've selected a few different stencils and I'll put links to those stencils in the description box below. And I'm taking some white gesso now and stenciling through. Now, if I put one layer of gesso on, you can still see some of the black shining through, showing through, and you know, I want to have some variation. So I want some areas to be more opaque than others, and that's going to, when I add another layer of paint, look very different. This is a crafter's workshop stencil, and I'm just doing the same technique. The third canvas, you're not going to see me develop. It's one that I've done in another um, one of my iCAD videos, but I'm basically following the exact same steps. And I've taped down the stencil, and that just helps it from moving and shifting. So after it dries, and you don't want to use the heat tool on top of the stencil, I put the stencil back on, and I'm using my Dilutions paint and these blending foams, the Ranger blending foams, which I love. Now I've chosen the, the Dilutions paints because of their blendability. They blend so nicely and I love that. But this technique will work with any acrylic paint. Just apply different layers over time and don't put too much paint on the blending foam or the makeup sponge. I like using the blending foam, even with acrylics. I'm just kind of peeking to see how it looks. And that black in the background is such a nice contrast. Now you could do the same thing with any background color, not necessarily just black. I could have left it white and then what you see here that's black would be white. So if you if it's bothering you those little bits of white because the stencil didn't perfectly line up you can take some watered down a paint in those colors and touch it up. I attempt to do that and then I decide that you know I really don't mind that and I'm actually going to incorporate that little bit of white into further steps. So this time I'm doing another technique here and I'm stamping through a stencil. So if, if the stencil has wider areas like both of these do, you can use a fine stamp like this script stamp and get the stamp to go through. I'm going to have to do a background just with the black and white because that's very striking. I really like that. Sometimes you don't need to add more colors. So I'm going to grab out the yellow and I think in a minute here, you're going to see me grab my Dilutions kind of cheat sheet. And this is something Diane Reevely had talked about. She always uses three colors and they're next to each other on the color wheel. So I'm using the green or the lime green, the yellow and the London Fog. I don't remember the names of the Dilutions paints, Now, if you want to add more of a lighter color, you need to stop and let it dry completely before you can go on. So once all three are done, I'm just edging them with the darkest color or black. 
just to finish it off. I flipped through um, things in my stash and I have a whole bunch of these um, crazy birds and crazy cats, the Tim Holtz ones. And I'll put a link to those in the description box below. I love these stamps and I've, I've definitely gotten my value out of them because they're so usable on little canvases like this or Christmas cards or gre other greeting cards. You can put in pretty much any saying in there. So I'm just painting it a color. Like in that background, there's a little bit of that purpley, pinky color. So I'm just bringing that out with it. I also went through my sentiments to find a sentiment that goes with these birds. But both of those things are things that are in my stash. And I'm just going to invite you to check out my playlist, the Build Your Stash series, where I talk about ways that you can, out of the moment of creating a project, take some time and build up the supplies in your stash so that you have them at the ready when you are creating. And it makes for quick, easy um, create time where you can focus on the background and developing colors and you can accomplish something in a relatively short period of time. I also highlighted around that crazy bird and now I'm just edging the words with the black archival and a cut and dry foam. One, just to get rid of the white edges, and two, just to kind of, you know, sometimes it looks a little too pristine when it's completely white, kind of scuffs it up a bit, makes it match. And I'm getting rid of some of the white edges on the bird as well. fussing and fussing and trying to figure out which way I want to go and then I'm just going to glue everything down with my matte gel. You can use Mod Podge if you want. My I prefer the matte gel and the Liquitex. I, I, I have tried the golden one. That was when I just started doing mixed media and art journaling and I, I didn't like it. I struggled with it. I, I don't know if I would be better with it now that I'm more experienced and I know what to expect with it. So I have some of this pink and some of the yellow there and I'm just going to splatter on the background. And you can quickly wipe up if it gets a glob that is too big or it gets where you don't want it. I needed to lighten up the background a little bit and make the white kind of stand out. There's white on the sentiment and there was white where the stencil didn't quite perfectly line up, remember? And this is my one way of, you can't tell that now. You, just, you don't focus on those things now. And I'm just giving this a dry so I don't inadvertently mess it up. Grabbing my fine liner bottle, I decide to use, again, white, just to make it all work together. The background here is pretty dark. So while tech, most of the time I use black, this, this is a case of the opposite. And I like the effect of that. So one completely done, then I grab another crazy bird. And again, picking a color or part of a color that's in the background, I'm coloring it that color. This is why I don't paint the crazy birds or cats beforehand because I like to match it to the background color at that time. But if you have some color, you can find one that matches as well. Just using a liner pen, liner brush here. Now I'm just adding some of the details back in. The color kind of pushed some of those lines a little further back 
So I just want to bring them out again. And I'm not trying to be overly precise here. So I had this font again, or this sentiment in my stash. I tend to print out things in multiples when I do print out. I fill the page and then I just add it to my stash at the time. And I'm just playing with where I want things to go and I'm cutting up the words. Typically I find that I like to keep two words together. If you have every single thing separately, it gets a little too choppy other than like the little tiny word the and I I fussy cut around the sentiment so you get rid of a lot of that excess white and using the gel medium once again to put everything down Then I decided to just add a little bit of shading using the float technique and a dark color. The shading kind of separates the focal image from the background. You can add highlights as well in the same way but using a lighter color. So since I like the fine liner with the white on the other one, I'm just going to do the same here. And again, I'm using it kind of sketchily. I don't, I'm not trying to make a perfectly straight, even line. So in this one, Obsessive Cat Disorder, OCD, I'm just going to paint the cat yellow. And again, there's yellow in the background. So I'm matching the focal point to something that's in the background. You don't want to introduce a, a random color. Usually it should be exist somewhere already on your page or your canvas. And I'm really loving just painting right on these things with acrylic paint. It's quick, it's easy, and I always have them in the variety of colors. And like most things, I'm, you know, most times I'm putting various shades in there. Here I'm just adding a little bit of orange to it just to make it look more interesting. Avoid just using one color because it's going to look flat. And then I'm just shading with the orange again just to add more detail to this cat. You know, and I just asked myself, okay, where would the shade be? Like under the chin, between the head and the back of the, the, the rest of the body on one side if you pay attention to where the sunlight's hitting it. So I'm liking how this is. Gonna paint the nose and the ears a little pink. And going to edge the sentiments with a makeup sponge or cut and dry foam and archival ink. Sometimes when it's too pristine white, it, I don't like it as much. And I decide that I don't like the white at all, so I'm painting these out completely orange. Now, depending on what paint you're using, some paints are very opaque, which means you won't be able to see through them. It will cover up the lettering 
defeats the whole purpose of the sentiment. This one's not so opaque, so I can still see the letters with enough detail. I think I even went in and made it a little bit darker. But that's just a judgment call, and it comes down to what you like. If you like it, it's the right judgment. Using gel medium to glue everything down. I'm hoping some cat lovers or friends of cat lovers love this and uh, we'll give this to a friend. Just deciding to add a little bit more shading with black. And I'm going against the canvas on the outside of the cat. I wasn't happy when I did the last one with the bird. And I like this dark shading on the canvas. I'm actually shading on the canvas now. And I'm shading around the sentiment as well. So thank you again so much for watching. I hope you will continue watching my videos. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment, share the video with your creative friends. Bye for now.